Uh, hello everyone. Uh, this next game I'm about to show you uh, was played uh, in a, a very strong tournament in Zurich in 1959. Uh, Bobby Fischer was playing uh, Paul Karras. And uh, Bobby uh, was 16 years old at the time and uh, he came like this close to winning the tournament. Uh, but uh, uh, he lost to Geller uh, before, before the last round and that was a pretty hard blow for him. Uh, but he also uh, he still had a chance to win the tournament as uh, he faced uh, Mikhail Tal in the last round uh, But uh, he didn't manage to achieve a victory against Tal so uh, they drew the game and uh, In the end Mikhail Tal won the tournament Gligoric was second and uh, Bobby shared uh, third place with Paul Karras and uh, That's exactly the game. I want to show you Bobby Fischer uh, versus Paul Karras as uh, This is uh, Bobby's first victory against the Russian Grandmaster uh, I think prior to this game, uh, he played uh, four games against the uh, Russian Grandmasters, and uh, all game, all four games were drawn. So this is the game uh, against Paul Karras. Bobby is white, and Karras is black. Uh, the the opening moves uh, are Rui Lopez, so we're not going to analyze those. A6, Bishop to A4, Knight F6, uh, Fisher castles, Bishop to A7, Rook to E1 b5, bishop to b3, d6, c3, black castles, h3, knight to a5, uh, bishop to c2, c5, and now d4. Queen to c7, knight bd2, c takes d4, c takes d4, bishop to b7, knight to f1, rook a to c8, bishop to d3, knight to c6, uh, and now knight to e3. And uh, here, uh, before this move, uh, when Keras played uh, knight to c6, he's actually uh, attacking the d4 pawn. Uh, but uh, Fisher plays knight to e3 with the idea of sacrificing this pawn. Uh, but if black captures, uh, Fisher will uh, put his knight on uh, f5. And uh, Fisher understands positionally that uh, if he uh, if he manages to exchange his uh, knight for this dark square bishop on e7, then uh, his bishop his bishop pair will be far superior. And uh, Keras understands this as well, uh, so he plays rook to e8, making room for his bishop on f8. Uh, so Fisher plays knight to f5, and uh, Keras plays bishop to f8. Uh, but now Bobby still isn't interested in this d4 pawn and he plays uh, bishop to g5. And this is a very unpleasant move for black, as uh, the knight can't really be defended and Keras doesn't want to play bishop to e7, back to e7, uh, because that's uh, like admitting uh, the whole rook to e8, bishop to f8 idea was, uh, was a mistake. So Keras just uh, moves the knight, knight to d7. And uh, Fisher plays rook to c1, uh, a nice developmental move. Uh, he's uh, eyeing that queen on c7, also making uh, the room for his uh, light square bishop to retreat on b1. And uh, his position is looking very nice. Uh, still, Keras uh, can't uh, capture the pawn on d4. He plays uh, queen to b8, unpinning the queen. And now bishop uh, puts his bishop back, bishop to b1. Uh, and now uh, Keras finally captures the pawn. And uh, this is what I really like about uh, Fisher, Fisher's games. Uh, although he was just 16 years old here, uh, he really understood chess on a positional level, uh, which you'll see right now. Uh, Keras plays, uh, and uh, might I say, uh, Keras was an extremely strong player to beat. Uh, uh, he was, uh, at the time, uh, Keras was considered the strongest player who never became world champion. Uh, so he took, uh, knight takes on d4, and uh, Fisher captures with the f3 knight, knight captures on d4, and uh, here is a, uh, a move in between, rook takes on c1, and Fisher plays bishop takes on c1. And this is uh, also a very nice move, because uh, the bishop wasn't really doing anything on g5, and now he's also making this uh, queen to g4 move uh, really unpleasant for black. So e takes d4, recapturing the knight, uh, and you can see that uh, black is a pawn up, but uh, his pawn structure is all messed up, and uh, this is what uh, Fisher gets uh, in return, even more compensation. He plays knight to h6, 
temporarily sacrificing the knight. Uh, black has to capture because he will lose the pawn on f7. So Keres has to take the knight, g takes on h6, and now queen to g4 check. King to h8, and now queen takes on d7. And uh, Fisher is still down a pawn, but uh, look at the pawn structure. You can see Fisher has uh, a very nice pawn structure. He has only two pawn islands here and here. And uh, Keras' uh, pawn structure is all messed up. He has four pawn islands and uh, these two pawn islands have double pawns. So, uh, Keras plays bishop to d5, uh, protecting uh, with a tactic, because uh, the rook on e1 is pinned now, the bishop can't be taken. Uh, Fisher plays queen to f5, attacking the bishop, and now rook to e5, queen to f3, and now f5, really going for that e4 pawn. Uh, Fisher calmly plays uh, bishop to f4, attacking the rook. Rook goes back to e8, and Fisher plays uh, queen to h5, offering uh, another pawn. But uh, the pawn cannot be taken with f takes on e4 because the bishop is hanging, so uh, Fisher is making Keras capture the pawn with a piece. So Keras obliges, bishop takes on e4, and now f3. And now the rook is pinned uh, from the queen and the rook, and the only way to defend the rook is to play bishop to c6. So here is bishop to c6, and now Fisher moves his rook to this c file, uh, which will be a very important file, as you'll see. Bishop to d7, uh, Fisher captures on h6, uh, rook uh, attacks the bishop on h6, bishop takes uh, on f8, queen takes on f8, and now queen to h4, attacking this uh, doubled pawn here on d4. And it's uh, not very easy to defend this pawn, so Keras has to play queen to f6 and exchange queens. And uh, Fisher happily does it. Queen takes on f6, rook takes on f6. And uh, look at the position now. Uh, it's uh, Both players have rooks and uh, a light squared bishop, and Keras is a pawn up. But uh, uh, Fisher's pawn structure is so much better, and uh, Fisher is controlling this c file, which will prove deadly. Uh, king to f2, king to g7, uh, and now already we can see the immense influence this rook has on this c-file. Uh, there's uh, there's even a saying in chess that uh, you should always put a rook on your uh, you should always uh, put a rook on an open file uh, even if it costs you the game, uh, because if you don't, it probably will cost you the game. So rook to f7, king to e2, f4. This was probably a, a, a poor judgment move uh, by Keras, uh, as it allows uh, this bishop to have this great diagonal and uh, maybe maybe some tactical threats to this h7 pawn. Rook to a7, king to f6, rook grabs the pawn, now the, the material is equal. Uh, rook to e7 check, king to f2, bishop to e6, uh, Fisher grabs another pawn, uh, king to e5. Rook to c6, bishop to d5 attacking the rook, rook to h6, rook to c7. Now Keras is controlling the c-file, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, rook to h5 check, king to uh, d6, rook to h6 check. Uh, some repetition of moves, maybe, maybe to get out, of, maybe to get uh, to time control. Uh, king back to e5, rook to h5 check, king to uh, d6, and now Fisher finds this uh, rook to f5 move. Uh, rook to c1, bishop to d3, rook to d1, king to e2, and now attacking the pawn on g2, king back to f2, another repetition of moves, uh, rook to d1, uh, king to e2, rook to g1, and now rook to g5. Fisher finds a way to continue. Uh, bishop captures the pawn on a2, and now the material is again equal, uh, but Fisher captures, bishop takes on b5, uh, rook to b1, king to d3, h6, uh, rook to h5, rook captures on b2, now again the material is equal, uh, but Fisher captures, king takes on d4, rook takes on g2, and now rook takes on h6, check, king to e7, and now uh, rook to e4. And uh, this is a very tricky position. 
because uh, although white is a pawn up, uh, you can see that uh, black, if uh, the rooks are exchanged, then black can uh, sacrifice this bishop for this f3 pawn. And then uh, white can no longer win because uh, he has a bad bishop. Uh, he can't queen his pawn on a dark square with a light squared bishop. So Keres knows this and Keres will uh, try very hard to do this. Uh, rook to g5, bishop to a6, bishop to f7, bishop to c8, rook to g6, uh, trying to exchange that rook, uh, rook to h7, king to f8, uh, bishop to g4, and now again trying to exchange rooks, rook to c6, uh, rook to h6, rook to g6, and now Fisher probably calculated that uh, the position is won, so he takes the pawn. Bishop to g6 and uh, king takes on f4. And now the only thing uh, Fisher has to do to win this game is uh, uh, stop uh, black from somehow sacrificing this bishop for this f3 pawn. King to g8, uh, g7, king to g5, bishop uh, goes to d3, uh, f4, so the danger is uh, out of the way. Bishop uh, to e4, h4. Bishop to d3, h5, bishop to e4, h6, check, king to h8, and now bishop to f5, black can't uh, really capture the bishop, so bishop to d5, bishop to g6, bishop to e6, king to f6, bishop to c4, king back to g5, bishop to e6, uh, bishop to h5, uh, king to h7, uh, trying to exchange, bishop to g4, bishop goes back to c4, and only now uh, he pushes uh, f5. Uh, bishop goes to f7, uh, bishop to h5, uh, bishop to c4, check, king to g8, and now f6. And uh, in this position, uh, Keres uh, finally resigned. Uh, there is a forced win here. Uh, White will simply uh, maneuver his king around, and uh, he will he will manipulate this uh, black bishop to uh, to move out of the way. So White will easily win this. So yeah, this is uh, this is what I really like about Fisher's games. Uh, he really understands uh, uh, he really understands the positions, and uh, he knew that. Uh, the bishops uh, would be stronger there and uh, that gave him the opportunity to, set, to sacrifice that pawn and uh, well he calculated everything and uh, he won the game and uh, uh, he didn't win the tournament uh, as uh, he had uh, two bad games in the ending although okay he did uh, draw with uh, Mikhail Tal in the last round uh, but yeah, this is uh, this is uh, how Bobby achieved the uh, victory, uh, his first victory against the Russian Grandmaster, and uh, yeah, what a what a victory it it was. Uh, uh, he he himself uh, and the tournament committee uh, said that this was definitely his best game, and uh, that uh, for a 16-year-old to play uh, such positional chess against a Grandmaster like Paul Karras, that it's uh, well that uh, there surely is much more to expect from expect from this 16 year old in the future uh yeah so that's the game i hope you enjoyed it and uh, i'll see you soon